Hello and welcome back. Till today, we have seen how we can store our tabular data using delta tables, which can be governed by Unity Catalog. Today, we are going to see how we can use volumes in order to store data which are unstructured, semi-structured or structured and that can also be governed by Unity Catalog. Now, it is very important to know in order to use volumes in Databricks, you need to have Unity Catalog enabled and also you need to use Databricks runtime which should be greater than 13.3 LTS. Now, if you remember, volumes are the siblings of tables in the Unity Catalog hierarchy, right? So, volumes lie under the same structure of catalog schema that we have in our Unity Catalog object model. And this is the same reason why we can use Unity Catalog to govern the files which are residing in your volume. So, without any delay, let's begin with volumes. I am in my Databricks workspace. I've already created a notebook which is called volumes and the type of the notebook is SQL. I'm going to use the same notebook for today's demonstration. Now, just like tables, volumes are also of two types. The first one is managed and the second one is external. We are going to see both of them today. Now, in order to create an external volume, we would need an external location. And we already know how to create an external location and storage credentials from our previous video. Now, if you have not seen that video, I would recommend to go back and watch that video first. Let's go ahead and create one external location in our Azure portal first. Okay, so I'll go back to my Azure portal. Now, in my storage account, ADB is with data01, I'm going to use the container data. So I'll expand this, we'll go into ADB. And now I'm going to create one more folder here which would be called as ext volume, okay? So this would be used as external volume location. So I've saved this, great, our location is created. Now, the next part is in Databricks. We have to go and create an external location in Databricks, right? So let's go back to the Catalog Explorer. And today I'm going to use UI. Now, you already know how to do it using SQL from our previous video. I'm going to create that external location today with UI. Now, to create external location, we just need to go ahead and click on create external location. And I have to scroll down, I have to give name, right? So I'll give it as ext volume, which would represent our external volume location. We are going to use the same storage credential, which is SC catalog storage. And I'm going to paste the location, which we just created. So which is data container, our storage account, which is adb is with data, dfs.core.windows.net and the location, which is adb ext volume. Okay. And I'll just put a comment called this is for external volume. Okay. Now let's go ahead and click on create. Awesome. Our external location for our external volume is created. Again, we can govern permissions on clicking grant and you can decide what all permissions to give which all users or service principles or groups, right? But we are going to see permissions later. So I'll just close it off for now and I'm going to click on test connection. It says success. It means we have all the privileges to that particular directory which we have just created. So you can see it says read, list, write, delete, everything, right? So we have successfully configured our external location for our external volume. Let's go back to our notebook and start creating our volumes. So I'm back in my notebook. The first thing that we need to do is we need to start our computer. So I'll click on connect and I'll click on start and attach. So this will take some time. Meanwhile, we will write the command that we need to create our managed volume. Okay. We are going to use the same catalog, which is dev, and we are going to use the same schema bronze that we have created previously. Okay. Now, in order to create a managed volume, you just need to write the command, which is create. And in order to create a volume, you just need to write volume and the name of the volume along with the three namespace. So we are going to create it in dev dot bronze dot the name of the volume would be managed volume. Okay. Now I'll add one comment here. So I'll write this is a managed volume. Okay. Now in case of managed volume, you don't need to specify location. The location will by default be governed by Unity Catalog, which would be either at the schema, the catalog or the Metastore label, whatever you have defined. Okay. So let me just put semicolon here. And now we will wait for our compute for up and running so that we can run this command. Our compute is up and running. Let's go ahead and run this command now. It says, okay, it means our volume is created. Okay. So on the left hand side, I'm going to refresh first, and then I'm going to expand the branch. Now, if you see, the bronze is categorized into two parts. The first one is tables and the second one is volume. So if I expand the volume now, you can see the managed volume created here. Okay. So now if I expand the managed volume, it says no data because still now there's no data into this volume. Okay. Now, if you want to see more detail about this volume, you can just go ahead and copy the volume and you can write describe command. So I'll just write describe and I'll write volume and I'll paste the volume. Okay. So let me just run this. Now, if you see, it gives you the information, the catalog, the database, the owner and the location where this volume is stored. Now, if you see, it has been stored under a different location, which is under Metastore. Okay. So now if you scroll to the right, you can also see the volume type, which is managed. 
okay so our manage volume is created okay now that we can see the information about volumes using describe command let's go ahead and copy some files or create some folders within our volume okay now the first thing i will do is i'll quickly download one file which is an employee csv file from the internet okay for that i'll use the sh magic command so i'll write percentage sh and i'll just write ls minus ldr and i'll put a dot okay and i'll run this so you can see we have a lot of files here now we need to download a emp csv file to do that i'll just write w get and i'll paste the location from where we are going to download and this is the same location for pyspark 0 to hero where the emp csv data file is there okay so let me just run this it has downloaded we can just go ahead and validate to do that i'll just write ls minus ltr so you can see the emp csv file here okay so the one thing that we need to do is we need to copy the location for that i'll write pwd which will show us the location so this is the location where the file is present okay now we can use dbutils command in order to create delete copy or create folders inside the volumes now you need to remember one thing if you are going to use volumes within python and sh commands you need to specify the volume in a certain way okay let's go ahead and check that out so i'll use the python magic command and we are going to use the dbutils command now i already know that you don't know all the dbutils command but we are going to see this later in this course for now just follow along so the first thing that we'll do is we'll create a directory to do that i'll just write dbutils dot fs dot mkdirs now this will help us to create directory okay now in order to specify the volume location within python you need to specify slash volumes and then the catalog name which is dev and then the schema name which is bronze and then the name of the volume which is manage volume okay now you can specify the folders within this volume okay so we are going to create a folder called files now let me just run this it says true let me go ahead and refresh on the left hand side and now you can see a folder created called files okay let's go ahead and copy the emp csv file that we just downloaded okay so to do that we will use the same dbutils command i'll write slash python and now we are going to use the cp command so i'll write dbutils.fs.cp and we are going to provide from where we are going to copy the file okay so the first thing is i'm going to copy this location from here and this is a local file system so i'll write file and with slash i'll put the location and the file name which is emp.csv okay and i'll remove this extra slash from here and then the volume location so i'll just copy this from here and we can specify it like this okay let me go ahead and run this now it says true it means the file is copied okay let me just refresh on the left hand side and expand the files now now you can see the emp csv file present okay so the emp csv file is now copied within the volume you can go ahead and check the azure location as well you'll find the file now there okay but let's go ahead and see if we can read this file so in order to do a select directly from the csv file we can write select star from csv dot and within tick mark we can provide the location okay we can use the volume to read the file so i'll just put it here and i'll put emp dot csv okay and i'll run this okay my bad it is i put slash i have to put dot here so i'll run this again great now if you see we can read the emp csv file directly now since the headers are there this is why the header is in the first row but that's okay we can see that we can read the emp csv file from the volume directly okay so this works let's go ahead and create one external volume now so to do that we'll just copy the same volume command from top so i'll copy this i'll paste it here but this time we need to provide one extra option which is external okay and i'll change the name to external volume okay now i also change this to external and now we have to provide the location where the external volume would store its data so i'll write location and within single quotes we'll provide the location that we just created so i'll go back to catalog explorer i'll copy the location from here i'll come back to notebook and i'll paste it here okay let me go ahead and run this awesome it says okay let me refresh on the left hand side you can see external volume created okay so let me just expand you can see no data again let's do the same operation here so what we'll do is we'll create a directory so i'll just change the name here to external and i'll run this it says true on the left hand side i'll refresh files folder created let's go ahead and copy the same emp csv file so i'll just change this to external okay and let me just run this and refresh you can see the emp csv file let me just go back to the azure portal and let me just get into ext volumes you can see the files folder here expand this you can see the emp csv file 
okay now you know how we can use volumes in order to store data now we have copied a csv file you can also copy structured or unstructured any type of data and then you can go ahead and read those data using the format that we have specified in order to read the data from a particular location you have to specify this within volumes then the catalog name then the schema name then the name of the volume okay this can be external or managed that is okay but after that you can specify the folders or the file names okay now that we have created our external volume and managed volume is it possible to drop them the answer is yes again the same rule applies as of tables if you drop a managed volume all the data along with the metadata for that volume would be lost but in case of external volume if you drop the external volume only the metadata will be lost but the files will remain at the same location at your external location where the files are stored okay so let's go ahead and do that so i'll just drop the external volume so i'll write drop volume and i'll specify drib dot branch dot external volume okay let me just run this it says okay let me refresh now you can see the volume is gone so it is dropped okay let me just go back to azure portal and refresh here you can see the file is still there okay let's go ahead and create the volume back so what i'll do is i'll rerun this external volume command that we ran previously as soon as i do that it says okay let me refresh on the left hand side you can see the external volume there if i expand this you can see the files are also present okay it reads the file from the same location so even if you drop an external volume and you recreate it back, you'll get files back. But if you drop a managed volume, both the metadata and the data will be gone. Awesome. Today we have seen how we can create managed and external volumes and how we can use those volumes in order to read data or store structured, unstructured or semi-structured files. In our next video, we are going to see a lot about dbutils command. We have been using dbutils command till today, but we are going to see how dbutils command helps us in Databricks notebooks. Till then, keep learning, keep growing and keep sharing.